Hello, it's Phil Thatch and I'm here with Heather who's working the camera and my daughter Casey and we are at the, uh, what's it called? We're at the Collegedale Freedom Celebration and Fireworks. This is taking place on Thursday, which is my off day. It works out real well, July the 1st. Independence Day is July the 4th, so I'm happy to, uh, to be able to come out and photograph an Independence Day celebration a little bit early really close to our house. As a matter of fact, I made a video just the other day uh, taking pictures of butterflies and, and uh, moths on some flowers, and it was just about uh, this trail right behind us. It's just about uh, a sixteenth of a mile down that trail is where I was working. And now we're at Founders Hall right over here, and the band is uh, warming up. There's three bands, and I'm gonna have to use Heather's face to open this. So we got three bands. Uh, it's going to be Ain't Just Whistling Dixie Jazz Band and Anna Baldry, which I think who is warming up now. And Monday Night Social plays after them. They won Road to Nightfall Battle of the Bands about four years ago. And then there's going to be a symphony orchestra after that. And then after that, there'll be fireworks. All right, the first band has played. I took a few photos of them. They were mostly a brass band. And now the next band is about to start. Heather thought she felt a raindrop and there's like an 80% chance of rain tonight. So I don't know how much of this will make it through, but we're gonna make it through as much as we can. Okay, so this is the band called Ain't Whistling Dixie. And I made this photograph as they performed i used the 70 to 200 this is a 95 millimeter shot at 1 2500th f 2.8 and iso 400 and I, let's full screen it right now pretty cool little group of musicians this is the trumpet player from ain't whistling dixie and i liked the lights inside the building behind him uh kind of bokeified behind him on this 200 millimeter shot and here's two ladies that were playing saxophones in Ain't Whistling Dixie. And I really like that girl's pants. I think they're super cool. And I like both of their cool sunglasses. While Ain't Whistling Dixie was playing, they were tossing beads out for the children to pick up. I picked up three sets myself. And this gentleman, uh, the gentleman with the white hair, he was picking up beads and giving them to children who didn't have any. And I thought this picture was really cute because... The eye detect autofocus caught the little girl's eyes really well. And the father uh, was watching the older gentleman give his daughter some beads. They shook hands afterwards. It was kind of a cute moment. Anna Baldry was pretty cool. I took some pictures and now the horn band is back. Let's look at the pictures. Okay, this is Anna Baldry who played um, a set after the brass band with her Stratocaster with the cool butterflies and things on it and she did a nice job. Well, it rained and Monday Night Social did not play. So that's pretty disappointing, but the symphony is the last band to play and they are going to play. They're not gonna let a little rain run them off like Monday Night Social did. So let's check into the symphony for a little while and maybe some fireworks after that. This little girl recited the Pledge of Allegiance just before the orchestra played and I thought, she was really cute and did a really nice job. The orchestra did a great job also, and here's a gentleman taking a clarinet solo. There was another soloist a little bit later in the program on violin, and he was outstanding, but I didn't get a photo of him because I was trying to get my camera set up for fireworks photos. <laughs> Well, the fireworks finally came. The orchestra was great, and then the fireworks started and they were, the, you can see the stage is right behind me, but the fireworks were going on over here. And I started out with the 70 to 200, and then I decided to put a three-stop neutral density filter on, and that was wonderful because I could shoot at F11 and leave the exposure open as long as I wanted without having any hot spots. Um, and then I switched over to the 24 to 105 F4 to 7.1 and shot with that for a while. So. Let's take a look at the firework pictures and see how they came out. 
here are the photographs that I got from the fireworks display and I didn't get a whole lot. I was really struggling. I was using the Canon application to do bulb mode and to to start and stop each exposure and it was kind of flaky uh you know and it's not like canon has the only flaky app the nikon app is flaky as hell as well but i wish i had had a real remote cable release so some of these have been edited and others have not and we'll just kind of blast through them and let you take a look this one here is at f11 and uh it, it was in my opinion too exposed it was overexposed I thought I was worried that I, I, and a matter of fact, probably looking at the camera, I probably had some blinkies in this and I was trying to avoid blinkies. And so I crept my exposure, uh, or my f-stop here up to f18 and that's fine, but I really wanted to shoot at f11 so I didn't have any diffraction. Uh, this is another non-edited fireworks photo. And eventually, by now, see, now I'm back down to F11 and we're not overexposed. So what I did was I, I screwed on a three-stop neutral density filter, and that worked out really well. I was shooting ISO 100, F11, three-stop neutral density filter, bulb mode, and opening the shutter um, before something happened and closing the shutter, hopefully, right at the end of something happening. And this is another non-edited photo. Here's another non-edited photo. I, you know, I, I may end up editing all these. They, some of them that I haven't edited show potential to be okay. Here's another one that I did not edit. And another one. Here's another one. Now, this one I did edit. I haven't run it through uh, any programs to uh, enhance the sharpening or reduce noise or any of that but this one has been edited and I'm going to hit the uh, backslash key is that the backslash key Heather yes I'm going to hit the backslash key and you can see whoops all right you have to be in develop mode before you use the backslash key and that lets you see what it looked like before I worked on it it doesn't adjust the crop so whatever crop I did uh, it's still there, but you can see over here on the right hand side of the screen, I bumped the exposure 2.45 stops and I took the whites to minus 100. Before, when I first started working on these pictures, I was decreasing the highlights and I didn't like that look, but reducing the whites, I thought, uh, left the firework nice and bright without messing up the rest of the exposure. So, that's kind of what I did with those. And the biggest thing that I found was adjusting the white balance. Like, let's see what it was straight out of the camera. Was it 3850 in the temperature? And I, I moved it around and found that 2563 was the best. But you can, you can see, you can move the white balance around. And it doesn't matter because you're just working on the firework. It's not like you're going to have screwed up looking grass or, or anything like that. So you can... You can put the white balance wherever you think it looks cool. And I ended up landing right there on 2563 on this particular one. Here's another one that has not been edited. And here's another one that hasn't been edited. Actually, that one looks like it could make for a good composition once I crop it and maybe even straighten it some. Who knows? I'll, I may fiddle with that one a little later. Here is another one. Now this one I edited. I kind of started out editing these that night and then I worked on them again the next night. And on the next night, I kind of improved my technique. So there was my original edit and this is what I actually ended up with. So there was my original edit and let's see what it looked like straight out of the camera. There's straight out of the camera. There's my first edit. And here's what I finally decided that I liked the best. It's still pretty cool, this right here, but I, I like the rich colors and the prettier colors, in my opinion, of this one. Here's another one that I edited. This version of this picture I posted on Instagram. And let's see, this is, there we go. There's the straight out of the camera version. And there's the version I posted on Instagram. And I re-edited this photo and I like, do you like this version better, Heather? Or this version? I like, not that one, that one. That you like that one better? I like this one better too, but I don't know. I, I, this is probably more true to life of the colors of the evening, but even with that, who cares? This one is prettier. So there you have it. So there's that one. And here's another one. I think this is Heather's favorite one. And, and uh, this one 
had one of those fireworks where you ever seen a firework where the the little bright spots in the sky just go in all sorts of crazy directions that's what was going on with this one back here but there's multiple explosions one two three four five at least five going on in this and let's see what it looked like before i edited still looks pretty cool but uh boom there's what it looks like after after my edit and you can see over here i increased my exposure by 1.95 stops put a bunch of contrast in it took out all the whites and 39 on highlights bumped saturation to 100 and played around with white balance there's the original white balance and there is the white balance that i thought looked the best on this particular photo here's one that has been edited and there's what it looked like straight out of camera okay so let's take a look at this one um, this is actually this is the way it looked coming out of camera and i worked on it for a while and it turned out like this and then i uh, put it over into photoshop and i turned it horizontal and i really like the way this one turned out uh, this is one that i call war of the worlds and it is a pretty neat shot i like this particular area right here if we look at it up close you can see all it almost looks like hair or something it's just crazy and you can see all these little sparks coming off of each of the fireworks just tons and tons of detail in this photo and it's a this is a 200 millimeter shot i was kind of zooming in to the fireworks a lot of times i was shooting at 79 millimeters but this is a 200 millimeter shot at f11 with a three stop neutral density this is another one that i did a creative edit on this is the straight out of the camera version and i worked on this one and you know a lot of the of the photos looked better when i cooled the original exposure down but I, I kept working on this one trying to cool it and i just didn't like the way it was when it was cool so i said you know what i'll see what warming this one up looks like and i warmed this one all the way up to thirty thousand nine eighty. and and a lot of the other ones when they were warmed up just the palette of colors in the shot didn't look good but this one i thought looked really cool and i did uh you know i increased the exposure by 1.23 stops got rid of all the whites bumped the saturation and vibrates quite a bit and then on this one i put it into photoshop and i cropped it some and i i, I didn't spin it 90 degrees you can see see how this part kind of looks like it ought to be pointing that way so i cropped it i don't know 75 degrees 85 degrees i don't know exactly what it was and i call this one afterburner I thought it turned out really neat and there's just tons and tons of detail in here lots and lots of stuff going on in this one can't remember how long the exposure was 33 seconds on that one i wanted to do a wide shot so i took off the 70 to 200 and i put the 24 to 105 on and i wanted to kind of have the fireworks in the picture and be able to see some of the foreground but there was just really nothing happening in the foreground i've seen photographs from downtown chattanooga with all the city lights and some fireworks smaller in the frame like this which i really love this particular pattern of fireworks if there was just something else going on in the frame to put it with it might have turned out nice but we're just kind of in a field so not much happening now here's one that i've edited this is uh with the 24 to 105 at 105 10 seconds f9 and you know what's funny i had a circular polarizer on that lens and it was dark and i didn't even realize it and, and i just screwed the three stop neutral density on top so really i probably got like four stops worth of neutral density when you add in the circular polarizer this is what this shot looked like before i edited and it's kind of cool like that but i kind of like it better like that i don't know maybe i'm overdoing it you tell me this is part of the grand finale this has not been edited it, you have to really do short exposures when they have you know 15 and 20 mortars in the sky at the same time this one's got a lot of stuff going on and same with this one this one's only 2.4 seconds this this one i might be able to do something with i'll have to try that at some point point. and this is one that i edited this is a 3.2 second shot i did all sorts of stuff to this one 
And then I decided to work on that same shot some more and I made this one. I don't know. I, I don't know. I might like my original edit better on this one. I'm not sure. And that's the last one. Let's go all the way back to the very first shot. And maybe not the first shot. I'm going to try to find... Let's go to the second shot. I'm going to see if I can edit this for you. So one of the first things I do is get rid of all the whites. Bump the exposure. Let's see. This one's pretty bright. This is before I put a new... Uh, neutral density filter on it. So I'm going to back that up some. Let's, let's fire up the vibrance and the saturation to about 50. And then once you've got it kind of looking like this, this is when I start playing with the white balance. I don't know. It looks pretty cool warm. Let's see what it looks like really cool. Oh, so that looks pretty nice. And now let's mess around with the tint. Maybe about right there. Let's put a little contrast in it. And sometimes you can put a little clarity in there. I might back this color down just a little bit. And then let's see if we can. Oh, I want to show you something. I was about to crop it, but I want to show you this. And this is something that I've experienced with my Nikon Z6 as well. This is a 9.3 second exposure. And on long exposures, sometimes these cameras will have hot pixels. And you can see right over here is a hot pixel. I don't believe that's a firework. Heather's pointing out another one to me. Yeah. Actually, that I think that might be a firework. This right here, Heather's right. This is the hot pixel. So a lot of times I've had to kind of come in here and make that go away. But yeah, I think that is a firework. And the hot pixels on this camera seem like they're always green. I think that's about the only one I see. But anyway, let's crop it. Crop it just a little bit. Try to try to make things even. And there's where we started. And there's where we finished. All right, so that is all the fireworks photos I'll show you for this time. All right, we are going to pack up and head to the truck and probably get stuck in a traffic jam for about an hour and then go home and work on these pictures. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.